I'm, I'm very excited to see you all, and I'd like to welcome you all here. I know some of you were invited by the Army Cyber Institute. Some of you were invited by the Cyber Cooperative Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn, Estonia. And from what I understand, some of you might have been invited by Fancy Bear. So uh, whoever brought you here, we're glad to have you here, and we're looking for a great session. So for our opening welcome, we will be uh, honored to get to hear from my boss, General Caslin. Lieutenant General Caslin Jr. became the 59th superintendent of the United States Military Academy at West Point in, on July 7, 2013. A native of Vermont, General Caslin is a graduate of the United States Military Academy, holds master's degrees from Long Island University and Kansas State University. General Caslin has commanded and held staff positions at all levels of the Army, including assignments in the United States and numerous operations and operational deployments. Most recently, he led the transition from Operation New Dawn as the Chief Office of Security Cooperation Iraq in Baghdad, Iraq. He has also commanded the Combined Arms Center at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, the 25th Infantry Division, and the Multinational Division North in Iraq during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to welcome General Caslin. Thank you very much, Andy, and uh, Gretchen, also thank you very much, and special thanks to the Army Cyber Institute up at West Point. Uh, and good morning, everybody. It's so great to see all of you on behalf of the United States Military Academy at West Point. Welcome to SciCon US. Looking at the conference program, just like Gretchen said, I was amazed at the quality and the number of speakers over the next couple of days. But yet this morning, as I look out at the audience, I'm also impressed by its strength and diversity. I see West Point and ROTC cadets alongside our total Army force, active reserves and National Guard, and Army civilians. Our joint partners from the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and the Coast Guard join with many friends and allies across the U.S. government, NATO, and the world. And of course, after last Saturday's game in Colorado Spring, I'm very pleased to welcome the Air Force here knowing that Army prevailed for the first time in many years. And Navy, watch out. So Commander-in-Chief trophy and visit to the White House, we're all looking forward to that. Um, nonetheless, conflict is a borderless domain which requires close collaboration and partnership with industry and academia. So it's great to see so many distinguished members of the private sector and academia as well as media representing prominent national and trade publications. To each of you that are here, thank you for being part of the cyber conflict community of interest. And I am honored to be here today to welcome you. And I'm very proud of the Army Cyber Institute at West Point and the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn, Estonia, for both pulling together such a great and important and impactful event. When I graduated from West Point in 1975, and commissioned as an Army Second Lieutenant, our view of warfare was, for the most part, limited to three domains, the land, the sea, and the air. Space as a warfare domain was still very new, but that was essentially the lens through which we viewed war fighting. In the air, at sea, and most importantly, to an Army Infantry Lieutenant on the ground. I don't know, more than 40 years ago, we could have envisioned a cyber world. There was no internet. Its grandparent, the ARPANET, was still rel relatively new and limited to the military. Email was only a few years old, and most civilians had never heard of it. And I'm sure most of us here have days that we wish we hadn't heard of it either. <laughs> Social media as a mainstream form of communication was still about 30 years away. And the first personal computer, the Alt Altair 8800, that you had to assemble yourself had just come on the market alongside the introduction of the Cray-1 supercomputer. And 40 years later, I think we would struggle to envision a world without cyber. ARPANET originally designed to just move information among military computer systems exploded into this massive network of more than 1.2 billion websites containing a seemingly infinite amount of information and data that is accessible to everybody. Just in the last two decades, internet users have grown from about one half of 1% of the world's population to about half 
of the global population. Nearly 2 billion people a month use Facebook, and more than 2.3 billion people globally use a smartphone. A world-renowned theoretical physicist recently wrote that today's cell phones have more computer power than all of NASA back in 1969 when we placed two astronauts on the moon. The 2015 National Military Strategy, Strategy describes this new global information environment as empowering people to see more, share more, create more, organize faster than ever before. Individuals and groups today have access to more information than entire governments once possessed. But this new information domain, as you know, also has a dark side. We see this every day with the numerous examples of cyber intrusions and data breaches affecting the personnel, financial, and health records of tens of millions of people, including the Office of Personnel Management that affected many in this room. The continued proliferation of malware, cyber attacks, and data breaches continues to become more sophisticated, putting our personal information at greater risk from various global actors. Over the years, hackers have launched cyber attacks designed to disrupt infrastructure, and many also believe hackers will target or have targeted our democratic process. Cyber has become a critical element of national power. At the 2016 AUSA meeting, the Army's Chief of Staff General Mark Milley highlighted cyber as a new warfare domain in an area with significant military implications, stating, that cyber capabilities being developed and employed by major nation states have the potential to inflict widespread damage on an opposing country's economy or their military solely through the use of cyber tools. Cyber conflict isn't hypothetical. It isn't a threat we might face 20 or 30 years down the road. The cyber threat, as you know, is real, and it's taking place right now, um, right now, right here, almost daily. We need to consider what the next cyber attack will look like. We need to explore real solutions to combat and defend against these attacks. We don't have the luxury of time to find a suitable cyber defense to these attacks threatening the very foundation of our democracy. The next attack is no longer a question of if, but rather a question of when and how. These solutions must also focus on how we approach cyber education and training and how we train the next generation of cyber warriors, as well as the leaders who operate in this technologically challenging environment. That's why the work of, of organizations like Army Cyber Institute are so important, as they're on the, front, on the forefront of training and developing our future leaders in cybersecurity. In fact, when former President George W. Bush visited West Point a few weeks ago to receive the Sylvanus Thayer Award, he specifically cited the importance of confronting this new era of cyber threats. And he also cited the incredible work that's being done, in particular from the Arbor Army Cyber Institute. One of the strategic goals of the Department of Defense cyber strategy is to build and maintain a robust international alliance of partners to deter, to deter shared, or to determine shared interests and to deter increase in, and to establish increased security, international security and stability, and to deter further attacks. That's one of the primary goals of this conference. In collaboration with NATO Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, SICON US brings together attendees from more than 14 nations, many, are, many of which are NATO allies, all to further the development of of impactful partnerships with government, academia, and industry, as well as the sharing of intellectual capital in the cyber domain. As we know from experience, multinational cooperation is key to mission success in the 21st century, and conferences such as these are a critical step in determining how to cooperate and, uh, and, and subsequently operate in the natural international cyber domain. So over the next two days, I challenge all of us to consider the current threat and to explore how we can work together to build partner capacity to combat these threats. It'll take all of us working together to tackle our most significant cyber challenges, not just here in the United States, but on the global stage as well. I appreciate your being here to take part in SICON 
U.S. Thank you very much.